Amen. Father forgets that uh, <clears throat> I haven't worn a mask since March because I work for Amazon, so I'm used to this. <laughs> Amen. It's prayer time, and normally we would come together and hold hands, but we're going to stay where we're at today. And uh, If you're with your family, please hold hands with them, and we'll lift up the Lord in prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Shout out to the Lord. Father God, we just thank you for an opportunity to once again be in your house of worship. We're bringing us together, Father, so we can come and praise your holy name with each other, Lord. And even though we are socially distanced, Father, we know that we are still close to you. And we ask right now, Father, as we continue in worship service, allow us to worship you in spirit and in truth as your word commands, Father. And we lift you up on high, Father, because we know that if you be lifted up on high, all men will be drawn unto you. Lord, we just thank you for just keeping us healthy, for protecting us in this time of an unprecedented pandemic, Lord, and we just we just know that we just got to continue to rely and trust in you, and that we are covered in your blood, Lord. And we just thank you for just bringing us together as a body of believers, Father. And we ask right now, Father, as we are standing here in the midst of prayer, Lord, we just ask that whatever we may be uh, burdened with right now, Father, you take away that burden. Lord, that you give us your burden, because it is light, Father. And that we continue to rest in you, because, Lord, we know that if we rest in you, you shall give us rest. We thank you, Father, for just Lo loving us and wrapping your loving arms around us, Father. We just thank you for just guiding us and showing us the way and showing us how to continue to be your children as we show that there is hope in this world and, and his name is Jesus, Lord. We just ask right now, Father, that you would continue to let us worship you in the way you have designed us to worship you. That we lift up our hands, that Father, we, that we clap for you, Lord, that if we feel led to stomp our feet, that we stomp, Lord. What, Father, we know that we can't just do what we used to do, Lord. We are still going to give you all the praise, the honor, and glory, Father, because you are worthy of all that praise. And we just thank you, Father. We just ask right now, Lord, that you just continue to guide us, be with us, Father. And Lord, we know that you have it all in your hands. Regardless of what's going on in the world, regardless of the pandemic, the election, Father, all, all, all the protests, Father, we just know that you still have it all in your hands, Lord. And so we give it to you right now, Father. And we just ask that you continually just love on us, shed your grace and mercy new every single morning, Father, so we can continue to live out our salvation. We thank you, Father, Father, and we just ask that you be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we all pray. Let the church say amen. 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 Here we go.
Not because I've been so faithful. Not because I've been so good. You've always been there for me to provide my every need. You were there when I was lonely. You were there through all my pain. Guide in my footsteps. You were shelter from the rain. And it was you that made my life complete. You are to me my everything, and that is why I sing, Jesus, I love you, because you came, I couldn't imagine, if you weren't there, help me say, Jesus, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Because you came. I couldn't imagine what life would be if you weren't there. You are the joy of my salvation. All right, all right. You're the peace in my storm your loving arms protects me you shelter me from harm you are alpha and omega the beginning and the end my strong tower my dearest son, best friend, and it was you that made my life complete. You are to me my everything, and that is why I say, Jesus, I love. Because you came, Thank you, Jesus. I couldn't imagine what life would be if you weren't there. Help me to say, say, Jesus, I love you. Because you came. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you came. Help me to say, say, Jesus, I love you, I love you. Say, Jesus, I love you.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Jesus, I love you because you care. I couldn't imagine if you weren't there. Amen. It is good to be here this morning, not only streaming live, but to see some faces in the house. Amen. It's been a while, but we are glad to see each and every one of you and I just want to pause right now and say thank you uh, to all of you who have continued to support Greater New Hope um, in your prayers and in your giving and everything that you have continued to do in spite of what's going on in our world and for that we say thank you and we love you for it. This morning we are coming from the book of Esther, the fourth chapter, and the tenth verse is where we find our text for this morning. Esther, the fourth chapter, and beginning at the tenth verse. And it reads, Then Esther spoke to Hathach and ordered him to reply to Mordecai, all the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that for any man or woman who comes to the king, to the inner court who is not summoned, he has but one law, that he be put to death unless the king holds out to him the golden scepter so that he may live. And I have not been summoned to come to the king for these 30 days. They related Esther's words to Mordecai. Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not imagine that you in the king's palace can escape any more than all the Jews. For if you remain silent as at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, and you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not attained royalty for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go assemble all the Jews who are found in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, nights, or day. I and my maidens also will fast in the same way. And thus I will go in to the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish... I perished. So Mordecai went away and did just as Esther had commanded him. Amen. You may have your seat. Amen. This morning, I simply want to talk about 
such a time as this. Such a time as this. We find ourselves in the setting of Persia. It's the story of a woman and her role in the deliverance of the Jews from the murderous plan of Haman in the Persian Empire during the reign of Xerxes. Esther resembles the stories of Ruth and Deborah, two women whom God used for his plan. And there is a unique twist in that God is not referred to even once in this entire narrative. It is a time of great peril for the Jewish people. Xerxes did not measure up to the moral qualities of his predecessors. Uh, Riccati says that he inherited none of the good qualities of his predecessors, but only a love of opulent, lavish display which progressively sapped his moral fiber. And after reconquering Egypt and Babylon, he treated their people cruelly. Rhodius recounts quite a few bizarre episodes that have to do with his wives and concubines. Van Sinkle says that first signs of decay in the empire appear in Xerxes' reign, and Xerxes had the weakness, tyrannical character, and love of luxury to be expected in a prince reared at court. There are four principal characters in this book. You have Xerxes, also known as Aceros, and he was the powerful Persian king, and Esther, who becomes his queen, and Mordecai was Esther's kingman, and then Haman was the Jew hater, and some say he is the forerunner of Hitler. He hated the Jews so much, and Haman's plan was to kill the Jews. But Esther is called upon to deliver her people. And there are just a few things I want to drop on you, and then I'm going to let you go. But the first thing we see is on the darkest day, God makes a way. I mean, I could pause right there all day and talk about on your darkest day, on my darkest day, how God made a way out of no way. Uh, verse 14 says, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, and you and your father's house will perish, and who knows whether you have not attained royalty for such a time as this. Those were dark days and dark times for the Jews. They have been many dark days for the Jews since uh, the beginning of time. And we are living in dark days even as we speak this morning. Communism is on the march. The moral decay of the past two decades is continuing to decline in our communities, in our state, and in our country. Uh, we have the nuclear age and its prospects. Everybody wants to get their hands on nuclear weapons. And, and, and the bottom line is, as uh, soon as they hit the button, it's going to be all over. But you may be passing through dark days right now. Dark days in your home, uh, dark days in your marriage, uh, uh, dark days with your children. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Uh, uh, dark days in your business or on your job. Many folks have been laid off on their jobs, and so it's dark days and can't get a hold of unemployment. So you're sitting there with no money, can't pay your mortgage, can't pay your rent, uh, can't keep the lights on. Everything is just coming to a head. Dark days with your health, fears. Dark days emotionally, no peace, tears near the surface, civil unrest, and still fighting for equal rights. There are dark days facing us. 
But I'm here to tell somebody this morning. God delights to work in the dark. I'm so glad that God delights to work in the dark. Creation's pattern, it was nothing, it was dark, and God said, let there be light. Salvation's pattern comes from dark. We must realize that we are lost and we are nothing without God, but God demonstrated his love toward us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Many Bible promises to those who are in trouble, even in dark times. But Mordecai's confidence, his optimistic faith, led him to continue pressing forward. And the world needs to see it. The world needs to look up. Look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Dr. Tony Evans says it like this, that we ought to find meaning in our detours. Detours are used by God to bring you to his intended destination in your life. So whatever that dark time that you are going through right now is just a detour so God can get you where he would have you to be. So don't be discouraged. Just look at it as a short detour. They're tearing up my road over on Prater and Sparks Boulevard, and you got to go all these different ways, but it's a temporary fix for a problem that will be solved later, and it'll be nicer when the road is completed. And So you need to look at your situation just as a temporary detour to get where God would have you to be. Yeah, sometimes it's inconvenient. Sometimes you gotta go on a bumpy road. But in the end, you get to your final destination where God will have you to be. And I don't know what your darkest hour is, or may have been, but I know from a personal experience that God will make a way out of no way. I don't know anybody in the house this morning been sick and didn't think you were going to get well. Had more bills than you had money. Didn't think you could make your mortgage payment. Had a wayward child. But God will make a way. On the darkest day, God makes a way. Secondly, we see from our text that God uses a woman or a man to fulfill his plan. Look at verse 14 again. He says, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, and you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not attained royalty for such a time as this. He says, who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom? God always has his person of the hour. I think about the mother of Moses in the time of darkness. All male children were to be killed, and his mother puts him in a basket, puts him in the river, and the king's daughter ends up with him. For such a time as this, God uses women and men to fulfill this plan. To go on, Gideon, scared old Gideon, David, and others. Then you can bring it a little closer to Luther and Wesley and Knox and Spurgeon and Moody for such a time as this. And perhaps you are God's person of the hour in America. Perhaps you are God's person of the hour for Greater New Hope. Perhaps you are God's person of the hour for Reno, Nevada. God has 
a plan for each and every one of us for such a time as this. But the question is, will you stand up? Will you be obedient and do what God has called you to do? He uses us, men, women, boys and girls, to fulfill his plan. And then thirdly, we see from my text, Esther's cry was to do or die. Her, her cry was to do or die. It says in verse 16, Go, assemble all the Jews who are found in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my maidens also will fast in the same way. And thus I will go in to the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Her cry was either I got to do this thing or I'm going to die either way. They're going to kill all the Jews. They're going to find out I'm the queen and I'm a Jew. They're going to kill all the Jews and I'm going to die. Or I'm going to go in here and I'm going to petition the king. And if he doesn't tell me to come forth, then I'm going to die. Either way, I'm going to press forward. And we need to get to that point in our life that we are going to do what God has called us to do. Do or she says, if I perish, I perish. She is now willing to get involved. And, and so many of us, we sit back on the sideline and we say, oh, pastor will go. Pastor will do it. Uh, the deacons will do it. Uh, uh, somebody else will do it. But God is telling you to get up off your duff and you do it. She says, if I perish, I perish. She's willing to get involved. And she's now willing to lay all on the altar. So my question to you this morning is, are you willing to lay it all before the altar? Give it all to God and let him direct your paths. She's now willing to surrender all to do her part. We sing the song over and over, I surrender all, all to thee. But yet, we just talking with our mouth, and our heart is not in it. I would just say to you, quit singing the song if you're not going to truly surrender. He asked us to surrender all to him. And Esther was willing to surrender everything. She will be God's person to spare her people because she gave in. She decided to surrender all. She concludes that quality of life is more important than duration. Somebody didn't hear me. I'm going to say that one more time. Esther concluded that the quality of life is more important than duration. She says, I'm going to do what God would have me to do. And if I perish, I perish, but I'm walking in the will of God. As I close this morning, this message is a call to full surrender. And I'm reminded that Esther fully surrendered, and we too must fully surrender. And say as Esther, if I perish, I perish, so that God may get the glory. 
This message is a call for real involvement. Everybody says, oh, yeah, I'm a member of Greater New Hope. When the last time you showed up? Before COVID. When the last time you dropped the tide check in the offering tray? It's a call for real involvement. You know, when I was younger, we used to say talk is cheap. It's our actions that tell the true story. It's a call to outreach, to reach out to others and tell them about this God that we sing about. Tell them about the God that we talk about. And not just with lip service, but show them by the way that we live. For such a time as this. And I just believe this message is fitting because we are living in dark times right now. And many of us need to make some decisions. Either I am all in or not. There is no in between. I'm not a gambler, but I've seen a few of them gambling shows. And when they have all them chips on the table and they push them all in, they say, I'm all in. You can't go back and take a couple back. Once you say, I'm all in, you have put it all in. And so you need to decide as a Christian, as a member of God's family, am I all in? And I encourage you this morning to make the decision to be all in in your life. And don't be like that person that says, Lord, come on in my house. You can go in this room right here, and you can go in this room right here, but don't go in that room right there. That, that's my private room. You see, in that room, I got some private things that I'm not ready to give up. I'm not ready to, to deal with. So, so, so don't go in that room, but you can go in the rest of them. It's time to surrender all. Oh. On the darkest day, God makes a way. God uses men, women, boys, and girls to fulfill his plan. And Esther's cry was to do or die. So I encourage you this morning to make a decision to be all in for Christ. Whatever that looks like in your life, if you don't know what it is, I encourage you to pray and ask the Father to tell you, to show you, the plan that he has for your life because he has a plan for each and every one of us. And I encourage you to accept it and to follow it. Let's pray. Father God, we are grateful this morning for your blessings. Father, we thank you for those that are here this morning. Father, I pray that you would help us to make a decision today to be all in. To say as Esther, if I perish, I perish. But Lord, that's okay because if I perish, I know you said in your word to be absent from the body is to be in your presence. So Father, we trust you today. We pray for those that are here, those that may be listening, that you touch their hearts and their minds, that they may follow you. We love you today. We bless your name. We give you honor. We give you glory. Just for who you are. Not because of what you did. You've done so much. And yeah, we can thank you and praise you for that. But Lord, we praise you this morning just for who you are. We lift up your name. You said if I be lifted up, you would draw me in unto you. So, Father, we come this morning lifting you up. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you.
We thank you for those that are here this morning, and uh, we appreciate you that signed up and did what you were supposed to do. Some didn't, but uh, and some did and still not here, so uh, that's a whole nother issue. But we thank God for those that are here. Uh, we uh, are trying to follow all the guidelines, so again, no shaking hands, hugging, and all that stuff. Um, we can give some air hugs. I'm going to air hug all of y'all right now. I love you. Thank God for you. And uh, again, we have to enter in one exit and go, or enter in one entrance and go out another. So this will be our exit. Everybody will exit from the side exit. There are offering trays there. If you want to leave an offering or your tithes, you can do that as well. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week as long as nothing changes. Our governor is threatening, so I don't know what that means, but we'll find out uh, when he speaks again. But for now, we'll be back here on next week. Amen. Again, God bless you. God keep you. You are dismissed.